Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. It is April the 8th. It's a Monday night here in West Michigan. It is 72 degrees inside my old hermit hut. And yeah, I wanted to, I've been mentioning in my recent videos about, I went to thrift stores last week and I got some books from the library used bookstore, The Book Nook. And I wanted to show these in a video this evening so I can get these down on the lower level because it's a new week, it's a Monday. And I got books coming in the mail tomorrow. I'm sure I'll go to thrift stores this week or charity shops. And uh, so I want to get these down the lower level. There's about 17 books. So yeah. So first of all, before I show you the used books I got in the mail uh, this afternoon, uh, these, uh, a couple of years ago, the Sertertian Publications was going to republish and do a new translation of Gregor the Great, more reflections on the book of Job. And today I got volume five out of a six volume set. This is volume five, books 23 to 27, which covers uh, chapters 32 of the book of Job in the Old Testament to chapter 37, verse 24 of the book of Job. I got this in the mail. Gregory the Great. More Reflections of the Book of Job, Volume 5, Books 23-27, to translated by Brian Kearns, S-C-S-O. Uh, I have the other volumes here. You have Volume 4, Great the Great, More Reflections of the Book of Job, Volume 4, Books 17-22. through And then you have... Uh, Book uh, Gregor the Great, More Reflections of the Book of Job, Volume 3, Books 11 through 16. And then you have Gregor the Great, More Reflections of the Book of Job, Volume 2, Books 6 through 10. And then Gregor the Great, More Reflections of the Book of Job, Volume 1, Preface, and Books 1 through 5, translated by Brian Kearns out of Latin. Uh, it says here in the back of the first volume of Gregory the Great, More Reflections, the Book of Job, St. Gregory the Great's Moral, uh, More Reflections, the Book of Job is a classic. It is one of the longest pieces of literature to survive from late antiquity, running 1,880 pages in the Latin critical edition. It is almost a complete commentary on the biblical book of Job. So many biblical commentators from the patristic and medieval era petered out before reaching the final verse. No doubt this is a testament to Gregory's tenacity and dedication. But the most remarkable thing about the Moralia is its contents. Gregory poured his insight, wisdom, and profanity Profanity, or profanity into it. He recapitulates the best of patristic theology, monastic spirituality, transforms these into the light of his own experience as a pastor, ascetic, and contemplative, and bequeaths his reluctant, his resultant vision of the Christian life to the Middle Ages and beyond. It is no exaggeration to say that Christianity as we know it today has been deeply in shape by the moral reflections of the Book of Job by Gregor the Great. So now I have five volumes. I think it's going to be a six volume set when it comes out. I've been wanting this for years and years and years. Uh, and so I was really pleased when I found out a couple of years ago that there was a new translation of the Book of uh, more Reflections of the Book of Job by Gregory the Great. He lived from 9, 15, no, excuse me, 590 to 604, a time of great turmoil in Italy and the Western Roman Empire. So, 
So I got volume five in the mail today, and I've been reading those this evening. By going to the used books, I got at thrift stores in the Book Nook, the library used bookstore. First of all, I got at the Book Nook uh, last week, Message of the Old Testament, Promise Made by Mark Diver. I got this from my wife because she reads through the Bible every year, Old and New Testament. And sometimes you get in the Old Testament, you want something that you can grab onto as practical application. And he does that because this is written for people who read through the Bible and he has preached to the Bible. He also has one on the New Testament, uh, message of the New Testament. But this is a good thing for those who want to understand the Old Testament in a very basic lay Christian level of understanding. And then I picked up today these. Uh, today I volunteered at the library used bookstore, the Book Nook. This today is a Monday, and I picked up uh, David Mitchell's novel, Black Swan Green. He's very famous for his novel, Cloud Atlas, which was made into a movie with Tom Hanks a while back. He also did the novel, Ghost Written, Number Nine Dream, Cloud Atlas, Black Swan Green. A Thousand Autumns of Jacob D. Zoot and Bone Clocks. I had every single novel of his except this one, The Black Swan Green by David Mitchell, so I was glad to get this. And I collect editions of Lolita by Nabokov. And this is Lolita. And I found out when I was cataloging this in my library thing site, I already have a copy of this. I get it for the, the uh, book covers. And I had this already, so I will put this in my roving library collection in my old Dodge van in the back seat. And then uh, last month, I was reading the New York Book Review, and there's a there's like a section in the New York Book Review where they they uh, they highlight a writer and they ask him what's your favorite book and what are you reading now? And all these different things. And they had one on Lee, uh, James Lee Burkick. And so the next Monday, I went there and I was just kind of curious about his writings because he writes crime fiction. And so I was reading one of his novels that was in the book, like the library used bookstore. It was called The New Iberia Blues. And this is it. Well, I went back... Uh, and I was reading it, and I really liked it, but when I came back the next Friday, it was gone, and I wanted to read some more of it. But today, they had a new copy of it for sale, and I bought it. It's called Lee, uh, James Lee Burkett, The New Iberian Blues, a David Rabish Kex novel. This is crime fiction, and I don't know. I was kind of surprised. It was kind. I kind of liked it, and I wanted to read more of it. So I bought it for $3. And then Saturday, uh, last Saturday, my wife and I went out to a thrift store. We had lunch with her younger brother, Calvin, and his wife, Beth, and out in Hamilton, where I used to work many years ago, and there's a thrift store. And I bought books there, two, uh, two books. The Unwinnable Wars, American Power and Ethic, Ethnic Conflict by David Callahan. And then I picked up a novel there at that thrift store in Hamilton on Saturday, An Arsonist Guide to Writers' Homes in New England, a novel by Brock Clark. I've been reading this uh, along with The Lazarus Project. I've read uh, 39 pages of this. I kind of I kind of like it. It's kind of uh, humorous satirical it's not to be taken you know seriously and then at then friday at the book nook i picked up sons and, and brothers the days of jack and bobby kennedy by richard d mollet mohani i collect books on bobby kennedy robert kennedy 
uh, their father, I uh, can't remember his name now, Joseph Kennedy and the Kennedy family, the Kennedy's wives, the, all the, the Kennedys. So I picked this up. Then I picked up a book uh, on Churchill's ministry, but on gentlemen warfare, the Mavericks who plotted Hitler's defeat by Giles Milton. I collect books on Churchill. And then I picked all these books up last Monday at the Book Nook, the Library Used Bookstore. I got all these books at the Book Nook last Monday. I spent about $26 on these books. And I, when I was cataloging this book, Freedom or Death, by Nicholas Kanzanskis, he's a, a Greek writer. This is translated from Greece by Jonathan Griffin. I had this one, Death or Freedom or Death, by Nicholas Kanzanskis. I had this already, so I'll, I'll put this in the roving library van. <laughs> and then I picked up the book nook last Monday. A first edition of an early novel by Gord Vidal, Dark Green and Bright Red. This is published in 1950. It was the first edition. And it's about, it takes place in South America about some revolution, a political novel on the South American Revolution. When it came out in 1950, it got really kind of middle kind of reviews, but I collect Gord Vidal and I didn't have this one in my Gord Vidal, Gord Vidal collection. And then I picked up these essays by Gary Suto, The Effects of Kurt Hampson on a Fresno Boy, Recollections and Short Essays. I don't know anything about him, but it was only a dollar and a I like reading essays, and I like reading about California. And then I picked up Patrol Breck's journals, 1934 and 1955. When I was really into theater and playwriting and pl screenwriters back in my early 20s, I was into the theater of the absurd in Germany, and Patrol Breck was one of those screenwriters of the Theater of the Absurd. These, he was a German. He lived from 1934 to 1955. And I just bought these journals because I collect journals and letters. And I haven't really looked much at it except it covers the Nazis and the Germany during the war. There's a picture of Hitler. I don't know exactly where Patrol Brex stood during the Nazis, during the Second World War in Germany, I don't know. And then I picked up V.S. V, uh, v. Nepal, The Return of Eva Petron and the Killings of Trinidad. These are essays. I collect his writings. This was also a first edition. This came out in 1980. Perfect condition. I collect his writings, essays, short stories, novels, biographies, literary. He's written all kinds of books, but I got this really cheap. I don't know why I can't get it on there. So I got that. I don't know why I can't get it on there. Then I picked up, I showed you in my short story video that I collect the story, the novels and short stories of Anne Beatty, Beatty, What Was Mine, stories by her. And then I picked up uh, Horace Wimpole's England by uh, Alfred Bishop Manson. These are his letters. He lived in the 17th century or 18th century. Horace Wimpole's England as his letters picture it, edited by Alfred Bishop Manson. This came out in 1930. I I like reading about 17th, 18th century English poets and writers and dramatists and 
British life, intellectual life, and the enlight English enlightenment. So I got that. I like the... Uh, I have a novel by him. He wrote novels. and So I got this. I collect books on the First World War. This is one with our backs to the wall, victory and defeat in 1918 by David Stevenson. And then I picked up uh, Black and Lamb and Gray Falcon by Rebecca West. I just showed you a paperback novel by Bert Rebecca West. This is the Black and Lamb and Gray Falcon, a journey through Yugoslavia. It's nonfiction. This was first published in 1940, before the Second World War. I had this in an old two-volume old paperback, and then I saw this hardback one edition, one volume edition, and I picked it up for seven dollars. It has photos in there, and it's a very famous work about by Rebecca West and. Uh, so I, I picked it up for seven dollars and it's in perfect condition. <coughs> so yeah, I got The Black Lamb and Gray Falcon by Rebecca West, published in 1940. I got a book on the First World War with our backs to the wall, Victory and Defeat in 1918 by David Stevenson. I got a book on uh, England in the 18th century by the letters of Horace Wilpaw. I got short stories by Ann Beatty. Essays by V.S. Nepal. The Return of Eva Patron, which was he was a South American, or she was a South American dictator. The journals of the German screenwriter, dramatist, Patrol Breck, Theater of the Absurd. Journals from 1934 to 1955. I picked up these recollections and short essays by Gary Soto. Uh, I had this in our library, the Freedom or Death by the Greek, famous Greek writer. He wrote Zobra the Greek, which made it into a movie back in the 60s, I think. Nicholas Kazanzi's. I picked up The Arsonist Guide to Writers' Homes in New England by Brock a novel by Brock Clark. I've been reading this. It's kind of funny, kind of humorous, kind of sad. But I've been reading that. Monday Reads. Picked up The Un Unwinnable Wars, American Power and Ethic Conflict by David Culligan. Crime Fiction by James Lee Burke today. The New Iberian Blues. And I picked up uh, another copy of Lolita by Nabatov which I'll put in my roving library, van library, in my old Dodge van. I like the different covers. I'm always looking for different covers. I have five editions of this Lolita. Picked up the new uh, David Mitchell, Black Swan Green. He wrote the famous book, The Cloud Atlas. And then I bought this book on the, uh, the Bible, the Old Testament, Message of the Old Testament. Promise Made by Mark Diver. A novel by Gord Vidal. Dark green, bright red, one of his earlier novels. Churchill's Mystery of Under Ungenerally Warfare, Warfare. The Mavericks Who Plotted Hitler's Defeat by Giles Milton. Sons and Brothers, The Days of Jack and Bobby Kennedy by Richard D. Mohani. And I read this morning for... At the book nook, when I was at the book nook, I read first The Saving Righteousness of God, Studies on Paul, Justification, The New Perspective of Michael Bird. And then I start uh, reading some more of Le James Lee Bur Burke, The New Iberian Blues. And I got in the mail today the fifth volume of More Reflections on the Book of Job, Volume 5, Burke's books 30, 23 to 27. So now I have five volumes of the Moral Reflections of the Book of Job, which uh, I've read. I've read those, those four volumes. I've read them. 
So that's uh, what's the Monday reads, what I got at, at uh, charity shops or thrift stores last week, Saturday, the book nook. So yeah, that's what's going on. I got books coming. I got two books coming in the mail tomorrow, which I'll show in, in future videos. I haven't gone to thrift stores this week. I'll probably do that this week. Go out searching for used books to add to our library, add to our collection of books. So yeah, it's a Monday night here in West Michigan. It is April the 8th. It is 9.37 at night. And yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to read tonight. I'm probably going to read Greg the Great, More Reflections of the Book of Job. Uh, volume 5, books 23 to 27, which is on chapters 32, verse 1 through chapter 37, 24 of the book of Job in the Old Testament. So yeah, it's, it's getting kind of spring-like here in West Michigan. It was kind of warm today. I saw some daffodils popping, popping up out of the ground in the backyard. But, uh, so yeah, so I hope you're having a good week. And yeah, I thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Hope you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.